Hi everyone. In today's lesson, we are going to find the equation of a line and we're going to find that equation where the clues are a slope and some other point on the line. To write the equation of a line, you need to know M and B to find the equation of a line. You can find the equation of a line if you know its slope and one point on the line. So that's all you need to find an equation. So slope, we need M. We need to know B, even if our one point that we're given is not B. We're given a point, but it's not B. We're going to talk about how to find that equation. So we've get, we're given the slope here, negative 2 thirds, and it passes through this point. Now, this is not the y-intercept, clearly. So let's first of all do a quick sketch. It's always good to have a visual. Take a guess at what you think your line should look like. So, I've got just, if the question doesn't ask for a graph, you don't have to do one and you don't have to use a ruler, but let's just do a quick, get an idea of what we're looking for here. We've got a, it passes through two, uh, negative two fives. So let's say negative two five is one, two, see, I'm not even really paying, really paying attention to this. Negative two five is about here. That's negative two five. And we've got a slope of negative 2 over 3. So from here I've got to drop 2, 1, 2, and I've got to run 3, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so I've got another point here. So I'm going to just draw a quick kind of um, straight line through these two lines here. Okay, and that's a very rough sketch just a very rough sketch, just so uh, we, we, we're we gonna probably need to use this later. Step one is the formula, and this is the big formula, the, the big money maker of the year is y equals mx plus b. What can we sub into that formula? What do we know? Well, when you look at the equation, you can see that we know the slope. That's gonna go in for m right there, that's our slope. I put that in red. Do we know B? Can we sub in B? No, we don't. We have a point, but this point, negative 2, 5, is not the y-intercept. Here's my y-intercept, but I don't know what that is, right? So I can't sub that in. I'm going to find it, though. I'm going to find B by subbing in that point. So when I look at that point up there, I'm going to label it. It takes two seconds. This is an X, this is a Y. I don't want to mess that up. And students do mess it up. And the reason why you'd think that's ridiculous, I'll never mess it up, is because the first thing you sub in is a Y here. But people just take the first number and they'll put the negative two there. But look at the Y, then the X. It's, it's a common mistake, but it's just one that you hate to make. So just take the time to do that little labeling there. So let's sub in the X and the Y in the right spots. Then we do a little bit of math here. We, we're looking at, we've got negative 2 thirds times negative 2, and that's a negative 2 over 1. So when I multiply those together, I get a numerator of 4, and the two negatives make a positive, and a denominator of 3. I'm trying to isolate b, so I bring the 4 thirds over. Now I've got a fra I've got a integer subtract fraction, so I'm going to change that to a 5 over 1. What's 5 over 1? changed to a denominator of 3. It's going to be 15 over 3 minus 4 over 3. Now I have a common denominator. I can subtract them and I'll get 11 over 3 equals b. So that's step 3. Find b by subbing in the point. So step 4, I put it way down here. Does that b value look reasonable? Look at your graph. So this is why we did the little sketch here. 11 over 3, my b value, so I'm just going to change that to a mixed number. That's 3 holes, right, and 2 thirds. So, and in terms of uh, decimal, I know, when because I'm just doing talking about my sketch here, that would be about 3.6 repeating, 3.666. So this point up here, this point here doesn't really, you know, my this was just a sketch is that three and two thirds well it's pretty close it looks a bit closer to four but remember i just did a sketch i would be looking i'd be wanting to make sure that my point of intersection there on the y-axis that um that 
I didn't get for a B value something like 12. Okay, that would be way off because 12 is way up here somewhere. So I won't then that would be a bit of a concern. Or if I had negative anything, negative one, then that would be a concern too. So I want to make sure that um, the number that I pick for my, I can erase these here, the number that I get for my y-intercept is reasonable, right? It's not perfect because I did not do a very good graph there, but it's, what it says here, does it look reasonable? Yeah, it does look reasonable. Three and two thirds, okay, it's good enough. It's pretty close considering I just, the, none of my spaces, none of my intervals are even there at all and I didn't use a ruler. So we have determined that our answer is probably right. So we're gonna state the equation of the line and make that nice and clear. Always use fractions. The only time you can use decimals is if there are decimals in the question. And this question even had fractions right in it, so you would never change those to decimals. Decimals are inaccurate. And I've said this before, but I'll say it again. One third is not the same as 0 0.3. One third is not even the same as 0 0.33. If I just sat here all day and writing threes, I would never write enough of it, enough of them because it's a non-terminating decimal. So one third is exact, exactly one third. Nothing else that I could write is exactly the same as one third. It's close and it's an approximation, but it is not exact. So we stick with fractions whenever possible. Example two, find the equation of the line that's perpendicular to this line. Okay, look at that format there. I'm hoping that is uh, ringing some bells for you. That's our standard form, right? Standard form when everything is all on one side of the equation, we don't have any fractions and all that, that's standard form. Standard form can be a bit difficult to use sometimes, but that's what we're given. But we want the equation line that's perpendicular to this one and has this x-intercept. So we're not given anything to start off with here. So our formula, again, our big money maker is y equals mx plus b, but, can I sub in for M or B? Look at what I have here and what I have here. Is either of those M or B? No. I'm going to have to rearrange the equation to find the slope. And this is an x-intercept. It's not a y-intercept. So I don't have M or B. So let's start by finding M. So first of all, I need to rearrange this equation into a format that I can work with. So let's write it again here. So I'm putting this off to the side because I'm not this space um, below this space here is what I'm going to use to find the equation of the line I'm looking for. Right now I'm looking at a different line. So I've got this line here and I'm talking about this line right here. First thing I want to do is rearrange it. So I'm going to leave the negative 3y there. I'm going to bring the 2x over and the negative 6 over. So they come over to the other side and their signs change. Now I divide both sides by 3 to negative 3 to isolate the y and I get 2 thirds x minus 2. So if that went too fast, just pause it and do it yourself. You should get y equals 2 thirds x minus 2. So this is equal to this. They're the same. This is standard form, and this is y equals mx plus b form, or slope y-intercept form. They're both the same, they're both giving you the same line. Okay, why did I do all that? Well, remember what the question asked for. Now we know the slope of this line. So what's the slope of the line we need? We need to find the equation of the line that's perpendicular to this. Perpendicular to 2 thirds is negative 3 over 2. Remember that? We flip this number over, we take the reciprocal of it, and we make it negative. So the slope of the line we need is negative 2 thirds. So what do I do with that? So I did all this work here. I worked with a line I don't even, I'm not even going to graph or anything. I did all this work with this line, found it, its slope and its y-intercept. But that's not what I'm, the question is telling me to find. I'm looking for a whole different line, but this one just gave me a clue about it. So let's draw a sketch of what we have so far. We've got an x-intercept of 4. So I'm going to go over my x-axis to 4, 2, 3, 4. There's my x-intercept of 4. I also know 
that I have a slope of negative 3 over 2 from the line I want. The equation I want has a slope of negative 3 over 2. So let me do a few more spots here. So I'm going to drop 3 from here. I'm going to drop 3. 1, 2, 3. And I'm going to run 2 to the right. 1, 2. Um, I know it's kind of those curly things are kind of hard to see. You can draw straight lines if you want, but I'm going to have another dot here. I don't really know what that coordinate is. I don't really care what it is. I'm just doing a quick sketch. And then I'm going to um, draw a line that connects them. Let me erase those little curly marks there. So I erased everything by mistake. Let me fix that. Okay, there we go. A little cleaner there. Now I'm just going to draw a quick line through these two lines here, something like this. Whoa, let's pretend that's straight. Okay, um, there's a sketch of what we have so far. I don't like that arrow at the end there. Let's change that. Okay, now what? Now we have part of our equation. We've got the m value taken care of. So we We've subbed that in. That came from over here. We've got a slope. Now, how do we find B? So we just did this in the last example. How do we find B? Do you remember what we did, what our next step was? Our steps are the same. Uh, we've got our slope. Now, what's our third step? Our third step is to find B by subbing in a point. So even though it's kind of written out in words, an x-intercept of 4, that is a coordinate, right? An x-intercept of 4 is a coordinate. It's right here. The coordinate is 4, 0. So that's going to get subbed in for x, and 0 is going to get subbed in for y. Put them in the right spots. And we have this, what's in red. Now I need to multiply negative 3 over 2 times 4. Multiply these together. That's going to give me negative 12, right? 3 times 4 over 2 times 1 is going to be just 2. So we get negative 12 over 2, almost done. Negative 12 over 2 reduces to negative 6. So I'm going to bring the 6 over. Negative 6 over becomes a positive 6. I now have a B value of 6. Step forward, does that B value look reasonable? Look at your graph. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Right? It might not be perfect, but it's as long as it's reasonable. Then look at my line here. This is terrible. It's a wavy line. These aren't spaced out evenly, but I think 6 is, is good. Now, if I really wanted to be careful and I was doing a test, I might do my sketches a lot better. I would use grid paper, I would plot the points carefully, use a ruler, and that would really help me to see if my B value was correct. Step five, state the equation of your line. We have our M, we have our B, we put it all together, and we get Y equals negative three over two X plus six. So there's the equation of this line here. Notice that it has nothing to do, the x-intercept of 4. Some students will get a question like that in the homework and they'll put the 4 right there. Right? That is not what that means. It's not a y-intercept, it's an x-intercept. It's way down here, so don't make that mistake. Also, take the time to work with this piece. This doesn't tell you the slope. You can't just take this 2 and say, oh, there's the m in front of the x. There's the slope because it's an m. That's not the slope because we're not in the right form. So you have to rearrange it. So make sure you follow all of the steps based on what you're given. We have one more slide. Here's our last example. It's a big one, but um, there's lots of steps to it. But let's just go slowly because it's a word problem. Sheena knows that it costs $25 to take a taxi that's like an Uber, right? Take a cab to work, which is 10 kilometers from her home. So that's a good first sentence. It's got lots of information in it. She knows 10 kilometers, $25. So she forgets what the fixed cost is. And the fixed cost means when you get in a taxi, there's already a number on the meter. You already have to pay a flat fee just before you even get in. You don't start at zero, you start at something. So she forgets what that is, but she knows that she pays $2 per kilometer. That's her variable cost. That's her changing part, right? Maybe she pays two kilometers, or $2, maybe she pays four. It depends on the kilometers. Her friend lives 12 kilometers from Gina's home. Okay, 
you understand that? That's pretty straightforward. Gina has $60 to spend on the weekend and she wants to see her friend for the weekend. Does she, can she afford a round trip? Well, we're going to break this down. First thing we want to do is find the fixed cost because we didn't know, she didn't know that. She forgets what it is. So we want to find out the fixed cost and write an equation that includes the fixed cost and the um, distance. So I've got a lot of words here, a lot of reading, a lot of literacy, a lot of English. I need to convert that into math, which means I need a let statement. So I'm going to use C for cost, which is pretty common, and then K for the number of kilometers. Now a lot of times, instead of a K, you'll have an N here, but I just thought I'd throw a different letter in. We'd have N for number of whatever, number of kilometers, number of people, something like that, but I would put a K in. So remember our steps from our last two examples? What was step one? Step one is our big formula, y equals mx plus b. So I decided for this question to not use y and x. I'm using c and k. So c and k, which one is m and which one is x? So let me write up here at the top. Usually when we have a coordinate, always when we have a coordinate, we have an x and a y part of the coordinate. Now I've changed that. Which one's going to be the x? So the x is the independent. And we know which one is independent because it's always the one that comes after the per. So $2 per kilometer, that's our changing, that's our variable, that's our changing number. So that's independent. So my k is first. And then instead of a y, that's going to be my dependent. And that's that's the cost, so I'm using C for that. So those are the letters we're going to use. So I'm going to replace X and Y in my formula with C and K. Okay, now you don't have to do that. You could use X and Y if you want to. If the question doesn't tell you, you have to use variables that reflect the word problem, then you could stick with X and Y. What was step two in our previous two examples? It was to sub in the slope. What's the slope? Okay. Remember again, the slope is the number, the the chain, the variable number, the the number that is changing. So it's two dollars per kilometer, but that could change depending on how many kilometers she goes. She could pay two, she could end up paying four dollars or six dollars. So there's our slope. Our slope is a two. That was step two. What was step three? Step three was to find B. So these steps are all the same in all the examples that we're doing today. Find B by subbing in the point. What point? There's no coordinate in there anywhere. I don't see a coordinate anywhere. How am I going to get a point? Well, I'm going to have to figure it out for myself. Remember that very first sentence? That first sentence had lots of information in it. So the first sentence had, it takes her 20, cost her $25 to take a taxi to work, which is 10 kilometers from home. So there we have, go up here to my coordinate, the K value is a 10. So when she goes 10 kilometers, she know the total cost is 25. And that total cost includes her uh, variable cost per kilometer and her flat fee, her fixed cost, which she can't remember. So there's our coordinate. So we're going to sub it in and don't mess it up. This is a K, this is a C, put them in the right spot. So there they are in red. Now we do a little bit of uh, arithmetic here. Two times 10 is 20, bring that over to the other side. 25 minus 20 is five. So that's step three, we found our Y intercept. So on the other questions, I did a little sketch here to see, does that make sense? Is that B equal five? Is that kind of reasonable? Since I have to graph the question anyway, I'm, I'm going to wait and I'll do that in a minute. So what's step four? Step four is state the equation of your line. So I go back up to my, my original format here. Then I got my m value. Now I know my b, uh, my b value. I sub it all in and I get c equals 2k plus 5. There's the equation of my line. So that is the end of part A. And it was you know, it's just, the hard work is done now. We're just going to use that equation. Part B says graph the linear relation. So again, I have to think back to my independent and my dependent because for my, my horizontal axis is my independent. So that's normally my X. Remember this time I made it a K. 
So I'm going to make this my k axis here, the k there. And it's, let me label it, the k axis is the same as um, number of kilometers, so I'm going to label that. There's my number of kilometers and my in my dependent, what depends on that is the cost. So I'm going to label that as my cost axis. And now I need some numbers to put in there. So uh, what's reasonable for number of kilometers? So um, for the number of kilometers, I know that she, her friend is 12 kilometers away. So I definitely want to go up as far as 12. But the question also, um, talked about a round trip, right? So we need more than 12. The, if the question doesn't tell you how much, how far to graph, then you just have to kind of use some logic and figure it out. What does round trip mean? Round trip means there and back. So her friend lives 12 kilometers away, but she has to take a cab there and then back again. So we want to at least get to 24 up here, to see how far 24 kilometers would go. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. Yeah, I can count by twos and get those in there. Now, how am I going to get a, a cost value for that? How, how much do I need to put on my C axis? So here's an easy way to do it. It's a little bit of a cheat maybe, but I always take my equation, C equals 2K plus five. I look at my scale and I look at the biggest number I put in my scale. The biggest number I've got in there is a 28. So I'm just going to sub a 28 in there and what I'm the reason I'm doing this is because I just want to kind of see the highest cost value that goes along with with the kilometers that I picked so 2 times 28 is 56 56 and 5 is 61 so I want to get about 61 on I don't have to get exactly 61 I could go up to 60 that would be fine but this is kind of what I do just to figure out once I know my once I know my x-axis, once I've figured that out, then I just kind of relate my cost axis directly to that. So I'm going to try to fit about 60 on my on my vertical axis. So I decided to count by fives and I got 60 in there, no problem. And I don't really um, need that little math that I wrote. I can erase it down there. I don't I don't need to keep this piece anymore. But that's just how I came up with a reasonable cost to go with the kilometers. Okay, so that is um, my axes are set up, which is, is the uh, bulk of the work that you need to do to graph. So now how do we graph this? Okay, look at your equation that we got. Oops, this is what I'm gonna graph first. I'm graphing my y-intercept first, that's a five. So I'm gonna put a dot right there. Let me use purple. I'm gonna put a dot right there on five. That's my y-intercept, okay? Next is my slope. My slope is two, and that's two over one. So I'm going to, from here, from my y-intercept, I'm gonna count out two over one. And that might not, that might be a little tricky with my scale here to count out two over one. So if I wanted to, instead of two over one, I know that two over one, so that's my slope, that's the same as, I could, I could double them both and get four over two. I could multiply them both by 10 and get 20 over 10. I could get any equivalent fraction that I want. I could multiply them both by five and get 10 over five. Those are all equivalent to two, but they're, I'm, the reason I'm doing that, it's a little easier for me to count it out with these bigger numbers. So I'm just gonna take this one here. 10 over five is the same as two over one. So I'm gonna go, back to my um, my graph and I'm going to I was it was at five now I'm going to rise 10 not just go to 10 but rise 10 units 5 10 there's a rise of 10 and I'm going to run five so that's going to put me halfway between four and six so next comes the part I hate most when I'm trying to graph on a video is to get a straight line um, with my technology here. So I will try. You guys will do a better job than I will, but I'm going to press pause because this could take me a while. But my line is going to start here. It's not going to go any more in this direction. It's going to start here at this point, 
It's actually called a ray because I'm going to have an arrow on this end, an arrow on this end because it's going to continue on. The price of the taxi cab, you know, continues on, but it's not going to continue in this direction. So starting here, continuing on, that's called a ray. If I just drew a line between these two points, I stopped. That would be called a line segment. If I had arrows on both sides, it would be called a line. So right here, I'm going to draw a ray here. Think of the ray of sunshine coming out of the sun. It starts at the sun, one point, and continues in the other direction. So let me try and draw my ray. Okay, it's too low, but that's the way it's going to be um, because I didn't quite hit this point here and I should have, so it's a little too low. I also know, remember down here, I subbed in a 28 and I got a 61, so I should have 28, 61 on my graph, but I don't because I'm too low, but that's the way it goes with the technology. So that is the graph of a line. I'm going to erase all of this stuff here because I need to put um, more things in this space. So let me just erase all of this. Okay, what's next? Next, find the cost of a 12 kilometer trip. Kanjina, who has $60 to spend afford a round trip of this distance. So what do we do? How are we going to figure this out? Well, we have a Let's start with our equation and we have a new piece of information to sub in. That's usually what happens in these problems. You spend a lot of time figuring out an equation and then the next part of the question just wants you to take something and sub it into this equation. You just have to figure out which piece to sub in. We have two new numbers here. So we want to find the cost of the 12 kilometer trip and see if $60 is enough to spend. So actually I have two numbers I could sub in but I I'm only going to sub in one of them because I, I have to keep one unknown. So I'm going to sub in the 12. I'm really using this. I'm using this number to find out if I have if I can afford it. So 12 kilometer trip. So where does the 12 go? Does it go in for C or does it go in for K? Well, it tells you right here. It says 12 kilometers. It's telling you it's a kilometer number. So it goes in for K. 2 times 12, 24. 24 plus 5, 29. So we get 29. So what does that mean? Well, that means her cost is $29. Well, that's great. She's got tons of money, right? Her cost is $29. Cost her $29 to go 12 kilometers. No problem. But there is a problem. It's a round trip. Remember, round trip, round trip. That means she's going there and coming home again. So she's paying $29 to get there. But then she's got to come home again. Does she have enough money? What's 29 times 2? Is it less than 60? Yes, she can afford the trip to see her friend. Okay, good. That was a word problem. We got a lot accomplished there. A lot of stuff. Coming up with an equation, changing the variables, independent, dependent, coming up with a scale, all that sort of thing. Good stuff. Um, that was the last one, but I do have something to talk about before I sign off here. Um, a little tip, the B value, if the question says the line passes through the origin, then what's the B value? If the line passes through the origin, here's the origin. What's the B value? The B value is zero. The B value is zero if it passes through the origin. You don't have to wonder, I wonder what the y-intercept is. I'll have to go through all this effort to do all this kind of work here find the, to find the B value. No, you'll already know the B value. You don't have to do all this work. You'll already know the B value if it says it passes through the origin. But if you have a question like the one I'm going to show you here, 2B, in your homework, it says find the equation of a line that's parallel to this line here and passes through this one. Now, the reason I'm pointing this out, I'm not going to do this question. I think it's one of the first ones you have to do in your homework. But I'm putting this on here because it's a really common mistake students make. It says find the equation of the line parallel to this one. They will, students will just say that this five is their B value. They'll say, oh look at that, there's a B value. That's the B value right there. Um, and look, it's parallel. So if it's parallel, there's my slope right there. Um, there's my slope because it's parallel. Now that's true, but this is not your B value. It's like the question we did in example two, let me erase all this mess here. The question that we did in example two, 
this line is giving you a clue. This equation is giving you a clue. It's saying it's parallel to this line. Now this is some totally, this is not your line. This is not the line you want. You're finding the equation of a line, not this line. It's parallel. So yes, its slope is two thirds, but this is not the y-intercept of your line. You have to find it with these steps right here. You're gonna sub in this point. So it's common, unfortunately, for students just to see an equation of a line and say, there's my B value. No. You're finding the equation of a line. You're not using, this is not the equation already done for you. So you use this slope, you use this point, and you sub in that, that's your step three. You sub in this point, and then you find the equation of your line through that. So that's just one common mistake I wanted to point out before you get started on your homework so that you don't make that mistake. And that's the end of our lesson, 30 minutes, not too bad.